Hello, so I'm uh, Chris Vanatza. I'm a professor in oral health services at Newcastle University. I'm also the head of the dental school here and uh, I'm an honorary consultant in paediatric dentistry. And um, yeah, so my undergraduate degree was in dentistry from Sheffield University, and I moved straight up to Newcastle when I graduated um, to take on a longitudinal foundation program here at Newcastle. And um, that was over two years and was a week in practice, alternating with a week in the dental hospital. Uh, and I deliberately chose that scheme. It was the only one in the country at the time because it did have a bit of access into the dental hospital where the university was based. And I knew I was interested in academia already. Um, I then went from that into a clinical fellow position, um, which predated the NIHR scheme. So that was a Newcastle scheme where it was 50% uh, teaching and 50% doing a PhD. Uh, and my PhD was in the area of oral health economics and um, quite a novel thing back in, in that time. Uh, and from there, I then took an NIHR clinical lecturer post to do my paediatric dentistry training um, and I was lucky enough to secure an NIHR advanced fellowship. It was then called the Clinician Scientist Fellowship um, for the next few years, um, completing my training and moving into an honorary consultant post in the middle of that fellowship before then becoming senior lecturer uh, and then got promotion to professor this year and then just took up um, the post as head of school in the last few months. So, um, yeah, it's been quite an exciting year this year. So uh, my research is in the area of oral health economics, um, and I've been particularly interested to apply some of the well-established health economic techniques, but in the field of dentistry where we haven't tended to use them a huge amount. Um, and initially, my PhD was all about how people value oral health services and interventions using some very specific economic techniques to do that. Um, I've then kind of broadened out uh, my palette of different things I do. Um, so doing some economic evaluation of different interventions, uh, doing quite a lot of work around priority setting, um, and also uh, looking at uh, how we best set up dental services to provide what we need for the population. So a kind of a slightly more policy angle, uh, including in that how we best pay dental teams to provide what, what they should be providing. So I guess if I think back over my whole career, the biggest challenge that's been pervasive throughout is uh, juggling the different uh, elements of uh, clinical work, research work, teaching work, and increasingly for me now, management and leadership work, and trying to find time to fit all of those things, which I really enjoy in and doing each of them justice. Um, so that, that's the thing that's kind of been throughout the whole of my career. Um, in terms of the research specifically, um, I guess sometimes it's been uh, the idea that I've, I've been using new techniques for dentistry and trying to get people to understand those uh, and realize the value of those. Um, and then I'm also really interested in how uh, my research can make an impact on policy. And the, the kind of research policy interface has been an area that's been a real difficulty for me, but actually um, part of the, the joy of the job is working out how best to influence policy and how I might get around those difficulties. So I guess in terms of uh, time management, there are, there are lots of kind of techniques that people can use and uh, different things will work for different people. Um, I find that uh, for certain elements of my job, I need some really concentrated time, uh, making sure that I've got kind of time blocked out in the diary for particular things that I need to concentrate and think uh, but also knowing that at some points I'm going to be much better at doing the the simpler kind of admin tasks and and you know uh, admitting that and and uh, and kind of uh, giving in and, and doing those simpler admin tasks when it just isn't going to work doing a kind of bigger kind of research bit of writing for example so blocking out time definitely helps um, and I think also understanding that it swings and roundabouts and um, at some times of year certain things will have to take a priority at other times of the year others will. Um, and not feeling too guilty about the other one while I'm concentrating on whatever's the priority at the time.
I guess one of the main things I love about my job is the variety. And uh, I mean, it's a bit of a cliche, but no two days are ever the same. And in fact, no two hours are ever the same. Uh, I just love the fact that I'm doing a bit of clinical work, a bit of research, um, a bit of teaching, um, some management and leadership stuff. Um, so that's one of the real pleasures of the job uh, and one of the reasons I'm particularly interested in an academic career. Um, the other side that's become more and more important for me is the opportunity to bring people on. So obviously, as a teacher, I'm doing that for my dental and therapy students, uh, and that's great to see them developing. But uh, increasingly, it's about bringing on new researchers, um, enthusing them, motivating them, passing on some of the things I've learned, hopefully, but allowing them to develop their own careers. And then finally, um, I think it's about making a difference. And again, maybe that's a bit of a cliche, but... Uh, as, an, as a clinician, I can make a, a difference to individual patients one at a time. But as a researcher, I can make a difference to, you know, whole populations um, in, in a kind of much bigger way. Uh, and I think that's really exciting. So I guess I'm in a slightly unusual position in that my research is at the very kind of public health and uh, population level. Um, and so uh, with individual patients, my own direct research probably doesn't have a huge impact. Although, of course, some of my generic research skills about understanding the literature, uh, being able to uh, um, critically appraise things and apply things, that's very useful in me understanding uh, the best clinical evidence. But actually, uh, I think I'm probably making a difference to my patients at a, a different level in terms of how services are set up. Uh, how we uh, best provide services for patients and some of the public health approaches. So I guess I'm slightly unusual in that my research isn't directly linked to my clinical work. However, it has meant that I've been able to contribute as a consultant to some of the more strategic stuff. Uh, so, for example, I've done lots of research around how we commission dentistry in England, um, but then I've been able to apply that more locally by sitting on some of the commissioning groups. So our regional uh, managed clinical network, for example, and been able to apply some of the things I've learned nationally by looking at best practice uh, to our local region. I guess it depends who you're asking. Um, and I think people that maybe aren't at all uh, exposed to academia think that we sit in our ivory towers and, you know, read books and uh, write long papers. And uh, that is a part of the job. Of course it is, but there's a lot more to it than that. So I think it probably is a bit of a simplified idea that maybe the general public have about what academia is. Um, and I, I think uh, that a lot of the profession would say that we sit in our ivory towers and don't really understand dentistry uh, or our clinical areas. Um, I think that may be true to some degree, but actually as clinical academics, we're really lucky that we are still practicing. And yes, that might be in a very specific setting of secondary care, which isn't the bulk of where dentistry is delivered, uh, although some academics will work in primary care. So I think we're probably... Uh, yeah, not not quite as bad as it is made out on the uh, by the profession. I guess part of it is about how important people are. Maybe I did already know that when I was uh, starting out, but actually, when I think back over my career, it's really the people that I work with, some of my mentors, my PhD supervisors. Uh, who've really made a difference um, and some of the other people they've introduced me to and that I've therefore then been able to work with and collaborate with and uh, generate better ideas by working across different disciplines and across different people. Um, and uh, yeah, I think probably it's the importance of of working with other people and how important those networks are. Um, so I was really lucky while I was doing my undergraduate studies at Sheffield uh, to meet um, a, a guy called Professor Peter Robinson, who was our professor of dental public health at the time. Uh, and I undertook an undergraduate research project. We all had to do one with him, uh, but found that particularly inspiring. It was actually all around uh, whether we could teach doctors in Uganda how to diagnose oral manifestations of HIV. So very much not the kind of research I do now. But I just found the whole experience really exciting and interesting. Uh, and he also gave me the opportunity to present that at a national conference. That was, again, a really great experience that not many undergraduates had. Um, and 
as I was leaving Sheffield, he said, oh, well, if you're going to Newcastle, I'm going to introduce you to somebody there uh, who was Jimmy Steele. Uh, and he was uh, a real legend in the dental world um, and very influential on policy. Uh, and I met Jimmy as I arrived here and was he was an absolute inspiration um, sadly passed away um, early a few years ago uh, and a big loss to me and to the profession. Um, but he he really did shape my uh, research career, gave me the research area of oral health economics, which was really quite visionary. Uh, and those two individuals probably got me started. There have been a whole host of people since then who've had a major effect on me, but I guess I would pick out those two. 